Hey guys, welcome to Akihabira. Uh, it's Eric. I'm here at Brewdog in Rapongi. Casey's behind the camera, and I'm here with Ian, who works at Brewdog. Thank you for joining us, Ian. No problem. I guess the first question I have is, why did you all pick Rapongi to do the bar? What, what was the attraction there? Um, uh, basically, I, I mean, I joined maybe a couple of years earlier, so yeah. I'm not totally sure. But I mean, I suppose with Rapongi, it's kind of it's got that kind of foreign community right. kind of feel to it. There is a lot of yeah, foreigners that sure, do sure. visit Rapongi. Um, so I, I think that obviously that would have been one of the draws. Um, the, basically with Brewdog, right, well, from what I've seen is they like to basically, you know, put it in an area where, yeah, it's close to what, something that's going on in each major city. Okay. But a little bit off the beaten track that, you know, it, it's kind of more like with word of mouth and people going there and the craft beer lovers that come across it. Because I, right. I think sometimes when you, you have people that come in that don't really know about craft beer. Okay. Um, when they're looking for lagers and things like that, it's sure. kind of, I mean, you, if you get you know, the walk by traffic, sometimes you get a lot more of that, I suppose. So maybe okay. that's one of the reasons people why, stumbling but, out of another bar. Yeah, kind of I, I think with the thing with Brewdog as well, they always want to be a little bit different. Yeah, you know, and it's it's kind of a, maybe that the hipster style of like trying to find an area that's not so popular yet. Yeah, and um, basically, you know, putting their influence on it a little bit. So what the, what sort of customer base do you have? Is it mostly kind of like people that are really into beer or um, people it, that don't know what's going on? It's becoming more of a mix now. Mm. I mean, basically we want people that don't know about craft beer, obviously. Yeah. Because, you know, part of Brewdog's philosophy is, is making people passionate about craft beer sure. as we are ourselves. So basically at the moment, obviously it's more people that are into craft beer. The Japanese craft beer scene is just getting bigger and bigger right, and more people right. are getting into it. And you know, Japanese people, when they get passionate about something, <laughs> it's, you know, it can get a bit crazy, right, which, right. Is, which is great. I yeah. love that. I love that. I love the fact that they've got so much passion. So um, yeah, I think that basically with uh, it's, it's all just about like mainly the craft, um, craft beer element is what we serve. But okay. um, we do get a few people that come in. We always just try to like, you know, say, Instead of having this lager, maybe you have a punk IPA. Or something right. Like that. Yeah. Is that kind of the standard go-to for somebody who doesn't just kind of watch it? Yeah. Here, I mean, I, I generally find like something like a punk IPA, or say like a Dead Pony Club, is a good okay. starting point. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I find sometimes the punk IPA is a little bit more because it's got a bit more balance. It's a little bit more citrusy yeah. flavors. Um, so I think a lot of people that generally have a lager sometimes they can maybe go up that little right. level to that. It's not as big of a job. Yeah, to, uh, yeah, it's not so bad. I mean, it's quite a nice IPA that's not too of a hobby and not too bitter, so it's, it's cool. quite easy for them to maybe step up to that one. Is yeah. that your top seller consistently, is the Punk IPA? Yeah, yeah, yeah Punk IPA, it's, it's kind of a flagship beer. It's okay. kind of one of the first ones that they became successful with. Right. Um, it kind of, I think it won awards um, to be um, distributed in Tesco. Um, outlets around really? the UK, yeah. and that's kind of how the whole kind of explosion happened with okay. Brewdog. I think that was one of the catalysts, not yeah. the maybe, but one of them, I'm sure. Where do you see the craft beer scene in Japan going, or what do you what do you see as obstacles to its um, growth? I only thing I find in Japan that I feel is the problem is that they do the styles very very well. They'll get a style, they'll look at it, and they'll go and they'll, they'll, they'll perfect away, it. Right? Yeah. And they'll come up with some great IPAs and things like that. I don't know if sometimes if they look outside the box too okay. much. I think Oshitora is yeah, probably yeah. one of the only ones yeah. I've seen that really started to delve into different styles that aren't being used so much mm -hmm. by other craft brewers in Japan. Um, but I mean, Japan, Japan, it's all about like trying to perfect some and things like that. Right. So like, you know, Shiga Kogan, their IPAs, it's just That's awesome and stuff, stuff like that. Yeah. So, I mean, where's it going? I think it'll generally go wherever craft beer is going in okay. the rest of the world. Um, so I, I think like now it's coming more New England style of beers, okay. like hazier beers, lambics and sours are right. quite Huge popular. Enough. So I think maybe that's where it's 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 going to go. Okay. You know? Do you see like um, you mentioned the UK scene too is kind of like uh, coming up as well? Do you see any parallels there with the Japanese scene or like anything um, similar? What's different I, I think that? The, I think generally the UK scene kind of um, takes on its traditions from the UK. So a lot of um, craft breweries now are doing kind of kegged beers, mm -hmm. rather more American styles, you know, using like American style, oh, West Coast hops, or East Coast and all yeah. that kind of stuff. And then you've got the Cascale kind of tradition. So like like people like Magic Rock, I know, um, I think there's another one in Yorkshire called Vocation and things like that. They'll okay. do like a certain amount of keg beer, but they'll yeah. also have a few hand pulls. Yeah, yeah, okay. And stuff like that. So they'll have, they will have some cask beer that right. they're brewing as well. Um, basically, usually on site. So, I mean, with cask, you can't really travel right. and stuff like that. But um, so, 
And I've, I've, I've actually a couple of times I've been out in Japan. There is seems to be that that hand pump in a couple of the craft um, beer bars that I've been to. Yeah, you know, they all have a couple of hand pumps and stuff. Right. Like that, so I can see that kind of similarity there. Right. Um, I think Japan always has a big influence on the UK. Okay. As well, you know, I always find Japanese people really like that UK, the UK scene. Yeah, and yeah, stuff yeah. Like that. There's definitely so like the UK. There is some definite similarities, yeah. but I'd say the UK generally, when it comes to the craft kind of beer, it is generally more kind of looking at America I think okay. you know that it's been at the forefront for so long that right. it's kind of the look the go to and look up right. to kind of place you know and like as far as um, the customer base getting back to that a little bit have you noticed any any differences in like the palettes or the beers that people are going to choose when they're you know from the Westerners yeah, versus what the, even Japanese regulars what they would massively so now really? I mean I, I think like when I first started here I just saw a lot of people going Punk IPA yeah. or Kingpin 5 AMC mm. Um, the standard table and stuff. Even like you know, like with women, like them, like women and stuff like that. Mm. I found that the tent will go for the sweeter types of beer, the fruit beers and things like that, or the lighter side of beers mm. with the visons and the like, pale layers where they're not too bitter okay. and hobby. But like recently, I've seen like women like ordering imperial stouts and really going for the hobby really? kind of beers. Okay. We're talking about like I want, I want something really hobby. So it's it's changed it's changing it's getting a lot. like more evolved more special. Yeah, and I, I mean we basically every oh, year our sales yeah. just seem to keep on going up yeah. and up. So it just shows you how many people are now starting to understand and realise that this thing called craft beer is right. bigger and right, how right, big right. it's becoming. I think people's palates are I think people always like with craft beer, they want something different. Yeah. So once they've tried the IPAs and the pale ales and stuff like that, which they'll still drink, I mean it's cool to Yeah, years. that's never going anywhere. Yeah. But um I think with that they'll go, Oh well I want to try something different. I want to try something that's been barrel aged in a whiskey cask yeah. or you know, something just totally out there. So the type of people so, yeah. you get drinking craft beer are already people looking for something different anyway. Yeah, right? so they exactly. Have exactly. Yeah, too, a lot so. of craft beer drinkers don't will go, Well I've drank that. Right, yeah, yeah. I want to try something different, right. you know? Yeah, so I think there's a lot of that. That's yeah. So you do do sit tend with that, that kind of person. You see them go, well, oh, I'll, I'll try that. Maybe they'll like it, maybe they won't. But if they do like it, they might actually start drinking that right. a little bit more than what they were drinking before. So, yeah. One, what's your favorite brew dog beer? Right. And then what's your favorite, uh, like a Japanese brewery? Beer from a Japanese brewery? Right, okay. Um, Japanese cream. Craft beer, I think I would have to go for Shiga Kurt Kogan's number 10. Oh man, yeah. Oh, Good man. choice. Yeah. <laughs> awesome, awesome beer. Yeah. But Ushitoro would be up there as well. I think um, I think it was a Wild Green Everything that okay. I tried not so long ago. And they had a double IPA and I've totally, I've totally, oh, Alpha That's Charge. Okay. okay. I think it was Alpha Charge, which I thought was fantastic as well. Um, Brewdog beer. There's a few. I, I go to Elvis Juice just because after work it's yeah. a really nice, refreshing, smooth. Word. I mean, it's got a nice blend of bitterness and the grapefruits come through. It's a good mm. balance. Uh, but Jackhammer, probably. Oh, nice. Yeah, great. yeah. I like, I like, it. I like a nice hoppy IPA. All right, great, Ian. Thank yeah, you very much. No problem. Thanks a lot. It was really thank great you. chatting with you. We appreciate your time. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, man, thank yeah. you.